We're back again version 2 2.0 take two. Oh my gosh <laughs> this is like our first episode oh, all over again we figured it out my gosh you know technical difficulties here at the northern angler this wednesday evening we are so excited to bring russ madden traverse city's own streamer master uh to the northern angler tonight russ is a buddy of mine from way back Back in the day, I think you I've can known tell some him stories, I bet. Uh, since he was 16. Working at Riverbend, hanging out with Jim Tui, Sean McDonald, and the boys. Brandon Vaughn. Brandon Vaughn, Pat Rove, Mike. Oh, yeah. Great times. Anyway, Anyways. we're super excited. Hope you can find us tonight um, here on our YouTube channel. I think people channel. will catch back up to it. So uh, and, thanks, for, thanks for your understanding. Big time. Um, what did we say the first time? I don't know. We had some. We had something really important that you totally missed, and we it, poof, it's gone now. Of course, so right. Sorry, we were muted there, but we figured it out. Um, let's see. I don't know what else we got. That's um, it, man. What's we got? What's Russ tying tonight? That's the, been the big question of the big week. Question. What is Russ well, tying? I, like I tell a lot of people, Russ is trying to figure out what Russ is going to tie is like nailing Jello to a, a wall. <laughs> He sends me a material list, but not much else, and that's okay because I don't think he. Russ, when was the last time you tied two of the same fly? I never tie the same fly. See, so it's ever. it's tough to say this is exactly ever, what we're gonna ever, tie. Ever. But there's a reason for that, and I love, I always love hearing your reasoning behind it because I think people can learn from that and yeah. you know not be set in such a, I don't know, yeah. such a template of tying and fishing the same thing. It works for a lot of people, but. There's reasons to there's reasons to diversify the other way as well. There is. Um, tell us about what you've been playing with, what you've been doing this year, where you've been fishing. Yeah, what's well, going on? Well, the COVID, on, you know, obviously the COVID's changed a lot um, with everything. You know, the way we everything goes on. Sitting here doing this right now. Right. Uh, right now, I'm going to play around with a few new materials uh, that have come to my attention recently. Uh, the Lively Leg Brush, great product. I'm actually going to use a few different brushes today just to kind of open your guys' minds on some possibilities of, uh, I'm going to start with a little bit of a bass fly here. Don't do many bass flies, but this one's been so effective for me, and I kind of took it from the trout universe and brought a little bit into the bass world, and this has become a, a, one of my favorites, especially nice. for sight fishing around here. So I'm going to start off with that. It's a single hook fly. Uh uh, Arex one out 605 it's the predator light and I like the lighter hooks I'm using uh, fiberglass rods these days and a little bit lighter gauge uh, giving me an advantage fantastic start off with some I'm using six out thread but there's no rule to it whatever you want I like the Vivas use it all the time I'm going to put my thread, I'm just going to get a little base coat going on the hook. And I'm going to tie my eyes I'm going to, for this fly, for this jig style fly, I'm going to tie the eyes on the top like a clouser. And any eyes will work and any size eyes will work. This fly, I've gone down to a size four and tied this fly. This happens to be a one knot, kind of a standard bass hook size. I'm going to get those eyes on the top. And when you're tying those eyes in, a good trick is go around the bottom of the base, around each eyeball. Figure eight. Tying the eyes in first gives you a point of reference to your fly. So it kind of tells you where you need to start getting your act together to make your head on the fly. So I always tie my eyes in first. Pretty easy trick. 
You know, it gives gives you a real good point of reference, so you don't run out of real estate. This fly, along with a lot of my flies, requires some marabou, and when you're putting the marabou on the hook, guys, make sure you use an ample amount. Uh, if you use like one or two pieces, and I know this stuff's pretty pricey, this Montana fly stuff is awesome though, and you get great colors, great barring. It's kind of even up the fibers as good as you can. I use three feathers as a rule for me. I do one in the middle and two on the one on the outside of and that way your fly doesn't turn into a really small piece of marabou at the end. So make sure you got ample bulk back there for your fly. I like to use some eyes that pop because if it is a sight fishing game, you want to be able to see. And you can match all the bass guys' favorite colors around here. This is kind of that, you know, dirty yellow green. It works so good up here on the bay can add a little bit of flash to this tail if you want. I'm using some voodoo fiber here. It looks cool. Many strands as you want. Angler preference. And what I do is I just lay a few fiber on one side and then fold her back through, lay it on the other side. And then I'll cut them both at the same time. So you get some good contrast. Any material that you can wrap around a hook, you can use for this fly. Reactor flash, polar flash, chenille, um, uh, anything really. Sky's the limit on it. There's a million materials you can wrap two together. You can use the aqua veil. A lot of the swing guys will spin two two ropes together, and you have like kind of a cool. Uh, pattern there I'm going to take the polar and I'm going to wrap it about halfway up that hook and just kind of peel her back as she goes and again any color for these you want a goby color you want a crayfish color you want something jet black in the clear water so you can follow that thing on the way down Kind of a crayfish color on this one. So I, what I'll do, guys, I'll leave that about halfway there. And that way I can continue on with my wrapping. These are fishing flies. It's not arts and crafts out here. This is real fishing here. These are actually flies you can fill up your box and know you'll actually have a chance of catching fish on the things. What I'll do is I'll wrap a few rubber leg in there. Give it a couple wraps in front of it. So I'm right up against my eyes, but still there's a little bit of space there. Trim these rubber legs up, lift them up, send them to the army. What we'll do here is you can make a decision here if you wanted to add some more bulk to the fly, but this is a jig, so I kind of want it to go down. Um, but we'll throw a little accent in there. And you can just take a little piece of marabou or a schlop in or both. And that'll add a little bulk to the fly here. And a little color. Because you get a little marabou collar on there. Oh, and now what we'll do is we'll take a one and a half inch long lively leg brush. This is the white one. I'm kind of using some colors to stand out for you guys out there. This is a great material. I also use the two inchers in this as well for this exact same fly. What I'll do is I'll just take a couple inches of it. I'll wrap it on in front of that eye, in back of that eyeball. 
I'm going to advance that thread right up to that eyelet. And now I'm going to make a head with this. I'm going to wrap a few turns in back. And you'll notice those legs start to flare. And then as you get to the front, you just kind of figure eight through that eyelet, through those eyes. And if you get some of those fibers in there, take a whip finisher or a pick or something, just kind of poke it on out of there. You could also do it after. A couple through the center and then a couple right up in front. And don't worry about that extra fiber. You can clean that up after. I just gave it a nice tug and it cleaned right up. There will be a piece of metal here. Be careful of this. This can cut your line. You can lose a fish because of this. So maintain that piece of metal that comes inside that brush. These Dr. Slick scissors are awesome. Good utility scissors for cutting this stuff. Don't, do not use your good scissors. That's my disclaimer of the day. Make sure you get some thread over that. So you don't end up with a lost fish. Super simple little bass jig for sight fishing on the bays up here. And probably everywhere else for that matter. Tie them in any color. It's a fly you can fill your box and know you're actually going to catch something on it. Pretty simple pattern and effective. What other colors would you fish maybe tie that in, Russ? For sure, blacks. <laughs> you know, any, any of those... Well, what do we call them? The, those guys that kind of screw your flat up when they put those two poles down. Those guys. <laughs> yeah. They run a lot of black stuff out there. And, uh, you know, just in that clear water, you can see it. I like the goby and the brown and the crayfish stuff myself because I know those guys aren't throwing most of that. Sure. Most of the hair jigs sold today are like tan, olive, or black. And that seems to be like the, the big thing. And this, when you think about it, us fly guys, that's all we're throwing all the time. So we always have an advantage. After that guy throws the big gets it out there or whatever and yanks that sucker off that rock, you know, they're going to have to come up with something a little bit more subtle to get that fish the next time. And these type of patterns have been great for us fly guys out here and sight fishing. You know, you can make them as colorful as you want. Super easy fly. Probably work for trout too. I actually tie this fly for trout and do another one with a different kind of brush. Mm -hmm. Um but you can definitely do this style fly for trout in many, many sizes, all the way up to a, you know, jointed fly or sure. one with a shank included in it. Have you tried this for smallies, like on the river? Yeah, yeah, that right. This is ooh, pretty solid. There's there's a lot of good ones for this, but it's all the same design. It's just this has some chains. This has lead. You know, think about application. I'm a big fan of of you know tying an actual weapon or something that you're gonna use or you know plan on using to actually catch a fish not just tying something to throw in a box knowing you'll never use it which is fine too because practice makes perfect so tie up all the flies you want but some of them you want to fish some of them you know are more on the art side of things this is a great fish and fly super easy to do fill up your box with multi multiple colors multiple sizes yeah different and they tie weight. fast too and I mean. you can tie them fast and it, they look great a little bit of a twist to them with the new lily leg brush you know, manipulate your hair, do your stuff, but you can see them. It'll drop right down on those fish. They'll, they'll eat it. They'll eat it for sure. Feel free, everybody. I did did forget to mention at the beginning, use that chat window to ask Russ all your burning questions. Uh, we, will, we will respond. We will dictate to him uh, since he can't see the screen, which is probably for the better. <laughs> we don't want people feel <laughs> secure, right? I mean, in asking what they want, but... Uh, um, and if you're if you're watching on your phone, you do need the app to use the chat feature as well. But that's okay. I mean, and if, if you're, you're watching on your TV, you can go to settings and just you turn that stuff off. See the yeah. full screen. Yeah, recommended. Absolutely. <laughs> the full. Do you want to do another one, Russ? And then yeah. uh, I think we'll probably tie another one. Russ is so fast and efficient. We'll probably tie another one. And take do a, a quick. Tandem. We'll probably take a quick little break. Um, and then reset up for another one and then 
Maybe knock yeah. out a third. We'll get you. Yeah, we can we'll do have, it. You know, I have I'm a feeling just, we'll have a lot of questions. I'm too, just so. mowing through some brushes that I think are super cool, and and I think that they've come onto the fly tying scene in storm and in force. And there's so many different versions of the flies that you can make with just a simple adjustment of a brush. Sure. The object is kind of to show you guys that just because I wrap versatility. Just because I wrap this type of brush on that head doesn't mean you can't wrap any single one on there and create a different head. Some of them we can trim even. You know, a lot of those crustaceous brushes were great on lead eye flies, and all you can shave them right down to make something like a deer hair. Sure. So. And you've been doing the you've been doing the brush game for a while. Yeah. I mean, we have we have if you're new to our YouTube channel or us at all, we have some videos out there from a few years ago where. We were tying the chromatic peanut yep. for a while. I've seen a bunch of different stuff. Yeah, and so. and the great part of some of these foundation flies, like a pe like the circus peanut or something like this, is that it's all basically the same processes, just wrapped differently or weighted differently or sized differently based on conditions of water, your fishing species, et cetera, et cetera. But it's very easy to make these adjustments at your vice at home with simple hook sizing multiple brushes we um, put that that first fly you tied back in the vice real quick yeah. did you did i meant i'm hope i didn't miss it did you talk about how what you use to fish this fly a single at oh all? that's a yeah it's, that's um, a good question i will get to that um myself if i'm out on the bait most my fishing is seven six seven and eight weight rods um most of my streamer fishing six seven and eight weight rods um really um you know if you're talking bay you're talking intermediate lines you're talking some form of sinking line if need be based on your flat depth uh sometimes even a floating line so really you know versatility in these flies can be just simple weighting systems you might want to have one for floating line you might want to have one for lead core you might want to have one for intermediate so you can very you know you go from these dirty water fly eyes to change you know, lighten your lighten that load up run it on chains on an intermediate you know a lot of us fly tires and anglers and i'm going to slash that together because a lot of us guides fly tire anglers have gone to these brushes because we need to we got to go home and we got to tie that olive one you know the last you know last thing you want to do is go home at night and try to spin up some deer hair concoction you know at 11 45 after four beers and an angry customer so you want to go out there you yeah. want to grab your a material that's going to function quickly get the job done and mitigate all that hassle sure absolutely i mean get the flies you need and get an extra hour of sleep yeah that. yeah <laughs> i mean this does look look a lot like you know your circus peanut yeah. which is you know what when did you come up with that ross like in the late 90s like yeah, it had to be somewhere in there 99 2000 somewhere in that range yeah oh one i mean i can remember like that was just the 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 hottest fly for yeah for you know and nowadays we have the hooks that are so much better right we got gap on them we got you know tempering we got multi multiple varieties we got shanks now we have more than one type of sinking fly line now right you know it, and use all these tools to your advantage if you're not if you're not using them you're crazy you're gonna need a bunch of different lines not just one there's no one streamer line that's gonna work anymore there's yeah, no one triple, size fly that's gonna what, work what are your favorite lines right now what, what my favorite line them? overall is the scientific angler cold 25 always probably will be it's just a meat and right. potato grinder it's a mid-range if you, you know, have to have your one line it, that's that if i'm gonna yeah, yeah yeah if it comes yeah. down to feeding my family with the streamer rod i'm running that one right you know from 125 grains to 300 400 grains you know I'm, that kind of leads into another question we actually had uh let me get that's uh colorful colorado fly fishing it actually asked about you using and moving to fiberglass and I, we talked about that uh, <laughs> it's this thumb man <laughs> I, but i run a lot of glass and, and I, I like running the glass because i can cast without my thumb and if i get the timing properly i can cast very large flies 
without my thumb and I can incorporate my thumb about 50% of the time into my cast, which means I'm saving my thumb overall, you know, so if I want to go big, I'll put my thumb to it. But I, I'm a huge fan of the echo glass rods, huge fan of the Scott, you know, trout rods. I love the glass because it saves my thumb and I've been doing yeah. this a bit and you know, there's not much cartilage left in there. So anything that I can do to, to mitigate the wear and tear, sure. I'm going to try that. And, and fiberglass has actually helped me and probably help a lot of you guys out there too that have hand problems, wrist problems. Another really good friend of mine uses the glass too who has some hand issues and it's kept him in the game for a lot longer. So it's a consideration. I might mention it's pretty fun to fight fish on as well it's fun to fight fish on them but not that not that we want to you know fight fish for a long time but it's it's more of a a ease of operation um and once you get the hang of the glass you'll lose a bunch of fish doing real fishing for them you will pay the piper you will not land as many fish as you would with graphite because it's a huge adjustment even in the hooks so when it comes down to like tying your streamer well Oh, I got graphite hook flies and I got fiberglass hook flies because mm. I want that lighter hook. And I'm fishing short distance in that rod. If you need to strip down three, four times on a fi- on a graphite rod, you're going to have to pull a hundred yards of line in with that fiber pole. You're in a moving boat in Arkansas. You, you think a 10 weight can't even handle a 20 inch rod of fish <laughs> because it is that much. It is more different. flex, more. Yeah, it is a lot of that. But it's great. It's easy on the body. You learn to make less cast. You make more precise cast. You be, you fish a lot more efficiently when you have some kind of hand injury. So that's I I, I love all the glass rods. I mean I use like 1970s stuff, 60s. Love all my wonder rods. I still run them, painting them all crazy. But they're right. you know, I know Brian. I just went out did and, that too. Yep, yeah. I just uh, I went out with Jake this past year and. I should have changed my line. I think I had the same, like, Titan on, on that thing. It was just, no, I still fish ooh. with my glass. Shakespeare Wonder Rod. It's, it's like Chevy Chase of the Caddyshack. No, 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 no. You got to wait. Got to wait. No matter how big that fly is, you got to wait. Absolutely. Got to wait. Cool. We can move into another fly. Uh, tons of awesome questions coming in. So we'll try and make as much time for those as yeah, possible. Yeah, man, make but, uh, more time for questions. I love yeah, them. It's fun. It's, it's fun. <laughs> it's not them. as awkward up there, I think, when you're answering questions. No, when you have to right. fill the time, just... And we don't have technical difficulties. That makes a big difference, too. Right. Yeah. No, no stress. Those guys weren't worried at all. Don't let them kid you. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right, for, oh, for this God. one... For this one, we're still running that A that A Rex six oh five. I love the Trout Predator lights, great hook. Um, we're gonna do just a pretty basic size one. We'll do like a one two, and uh, this will be a. I'm gonna use a different material on this one here. We're gonna use some of the MFC Bunny Brush on this one. But I'll start off with with the smaller of the two, always in the rear hook position. I'm gonna run that six oh five size. Two back there again whatever thread you feel comfortable with it's gonna get a little layer Rear hook again we're gonna use some marabou for the tail Montana fly, loving the bard stuff. We're making this one olive. And again, I kind of had that set aside, guys, but there was basically three pieces of marabou. And I'll try to kind of even them up the best you can but it's a fly it's a fishing fly don't worry for one bad cast this could be in a tree hopefully not if you're out on the bay well this one will be this is more of a river one but yeah they can disappear quick put a little bit of 
that voodoo in there. contrast <laughs> I've been running some reactor flash on this particular one but you can like again any material that you can wrap around a hook shank you can use for this whether it be polar or aqua veil any of the the cactus chenille stuff you know now we have the longer fiber materials which at the time of the circus being out we didn't have right. so now you can add a little bit more mustard to your fly without stopping in the middle and throwing another hackle in there or whatever Russ might win the, uh, if there was ever a chopped competition of fly tying, where you just get a bag of things. Oh, I think he would I totally win that. Win. Oh, I love that. I think that would be great. I think we should Ooh, do maybe that. we'll do that next year. they did that. Isn't that like Ironfly? It is Ironfly, yes. We did that one year, and there was like... You got $4. Model, there was modeling clay and balloons. <laughs> it was pretty You got fun. four bucks in the dollar store. <laughs> reactor it looks a little different on this one that bright green cute manistee green <laughs> all right so we're gonna stop it there and i mean you can corkscrew up another material on there if you want you can put a hackle in there you can put rubber legs in at this point if you want really the sky's the limit but remember no matter what you do to this rear portion the more weight you put in there the less that sucker is going to move so if you want a basic jig style fly you're great with putting in a bunch of material back there if you wanted something to swim a little bit go easy on that back hook i'm just going to hybrid this one add a little bit of the brighter color two kinds of reactor flash in there more for effect all right so they spiraled through same exact process using the first fly no different, just making making rear ends here. And again, we'll go into a little bit of accent here. We can throw a contrasting color. We can put another little bit more of a marabou on the there if I wanted to. Do that. Cut it down a little bit basically that same single just repeated the process with a different color wrap kind of spay wrap it Give it a little color and that's just this just a hackle and back don't have to do these processes but it looks a lot better when you do and it only takes a second and besides anybody that put in a little bit of extra effort you can almost be certain that fly hasn't seen the fish have not seen the fly 
And it's really the last advantage that we have over that fish, all things being equal. Angling, the rowing, etc., the casting. The real advantage that you have, the only one that's left is a fly. So, might be worth something to somebody. That's why I tie a fly a different one every single time. I don't want those fish to see it twice. <laughs> It does make a difference. The fish eyes get as big as a saucer. You ain't ever going to move them again anyway on that fly. All right, so we created a rear end. And it's basically just some serious blending and, and taking the extra five seconds to do the two different wraps of the reactor flash, a little bit of extra nonsense on the front, the rare marabou wrap translates into a heck of a lot better fly. So we got the rear end of this fly done. And that was that was a size two, a size one. It's a one two fly here. Pretty basic when I'm running on many Michigan trout rivers. I'll do a one two if it's legal, you know, run a tandem rig. Get some thread base on this front hook. Twenty-five pound, thirty pound, whatever pound, heavier than a trout pound, something. Mono. You're mono. Referring to mono. Yes. That would be. This just... is mono. I use mono for one reason. It's more durable than wire. Once those fish start kinking on that thing, that back hook is fried. If if you fished at any length of time, mono is actually more durable than wire in certain instances, especially here in Michigan. To be honest, I don't even care if my fly gets destroyed in one fish here in Michigan. It's a joy to catch one in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I put a little spacer bead out here, which I forgot during my crazy joke. But <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lay a spacer in there. It's a six millimeter bead. I mean, it's important to have the right size bead, right? Yeah, you have to. And you <laughs> got to have the super whistle troutbead.com. So it's one of my favorite things to do with beads. <laughs> <laughs> See that? That's where a bead goes. That's just so you know. Just, just if there's any clarification out there. What I'll do there, guys, if I'll lay it across the, the back and then I'll fold her back over and I've never had anything break that thing off of there. Put any super glue or anything in it? I don't use any glue. No Sally? I just ride on faith. No, but I do have, I do use Sally. Sally. Yeah. Sally the Hansen's one. hard as nails. That's right. Works good on the hand, too. I've been accused of the Sally Hansen's before. I'm not afraid. She's a good girl. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna we're gonna start going through the same process here, and maybe I'll do the reverse this time. So I did the lighter stuff before. I'll do the on the end. I'll go lighter first, then darker. You get a lot of that, a lot of minnows and things at the front section of the head have a darker color, so. Not necessarily a bad thing. Certain times in the spring, I fish a black hair at black headed sculpin constantly. As do many others. Black and red sculpin. Throw a palmer of that reactor up about halfway.
pretty straightforward stuff so far with this fly. It's got some good blend to it though. Throw some rubber legs in this one. Now, always remember when you're putting these rubber legs in, guys, they're going to add a considerable amount of weight. So they're going to look great and it's going to be phenomenal when you're done with it. But you got to have to fish the thing. So, you know, be careful putting too much on both of these ends. You can put rubber legs back here, but I would recommend two. I would do if I'm going to put some back here, I'm going to put less than the front. I don't like my flies to have more than like six rubber legs usually. <laughs> and especially putting some of these brushes on the fronts, they're a little bit more bulky than others too. So now here I can, I have a choice to make depending upon what I actually want to fish and how I want to perceive this fly. In this case, that's why I stopped here. I wanted to determine what I was going to put in there. I'm fishing, let's say I'm fishing this week. And I'm fishing some pretty rough habitat here. The water has been pretty low clear. I mean, I like the olive, but I don't know how much weight I may need. Well, I can also look at that river temperature and say, I'm going to need some lead because it is getting cold and it's been zero for a bunch of days. And if I'm not running lead, when that water hits below 34, I feel as though I'm really cutting myself short. So that's another thing cold water lead flies add weight to your stuff it's not a there's no rules to it but it makes a difference especially in michigan when we have such fluctuations if i were in arkansas or somewhere else this time of year i may not have that concern because my water temperature is 50 something you know michigan when you're dealing with that zero degree night or 10 degree night or Finally, that gets up to 23 or 25, somewhere where you actually might want to actually go fishing. Probably would behoove a guy to have lead if he's in a river that's sub, you know, with some substance. If you're on like the upper Osable or Rifle or somewhere that's that's low clear water, you probably don't need to worry about that. But in a tailwater like the Manistee or something, it pays to have some lead. So I'll do that right now. This fly, I'm going to put the eyes on the bottom because I want it to swim. And all the peanut, the, everything that I've done with the lead flies in a swimming type pattern have always been on the bottom of a hook. Cast better, it fishes better. Figure eight these in. I'm going to go around each eyeball, go around the base. some rubber in there once I got that rubber in there I'll go back and I'll add my other contrasting color of reactor and again, this is purely from a blending standpoint and a uniqueness standpoint. Just putting in that extra little bit of work is going to pay dividends because everybody can go and get a fly. And if you're running the same one as another guy, you lost your advantage. Good in on the back side of that. Manhandle it if you gotta. It's okay. Right. Find a 
decent feather here. Here we go. Not hard to do with Fontana fly. I've actually been very, very happy with it. Pay a little bit more, but you get a lot more. So many. I think the ratio of usable feathers is astronomical. Right? That's it. It's we're not spending our time going through packs and picking stuff fighting for two or three good ones out of there. Yeah. Yeah. It, nice job. Whoever is in charge of that. It's big deal. A few wraps of it and I'll just repeat that process. That's just a basic hen patch, kind of a rust color. Lay that in there. Again, a few extra steps pays off. It'll pay off. It'll look a lot better. And you'll know you have something that nobody else has. Basically, both of these flies had exactly the same means of production. Circular motion palmering material. The variance in material is what makes this fly cool. And a lot of the flies that you can do with this exact platform, whether it be a peanut, this brush hog looking thing, whatever it is, you can manipulate those brushes to suit your needs as an angler. Montana fly bunny brush. Roughly the same exact pattern. What you have here is a different brush. Same exact method. Wrap it around. Figure it through. Utility scissors. Mattarelli whip finisher. If anybody out there in internet land knows where you can acquire one of these, hit me up. Huh? Is your sharpened on the bottom? No. There you have it. Do you ever do you ever trim that brush brush? I like them kind of long, but you can, you can. But what's nice about having those barbells though there it kind of directs it it kind of vertical and yeah. you know kind yeah. of that a thinner head and profile. i do i do like these style barbells but i obviously have used every single one possible so i don't think there's you know it's just a means of weight so don't think you know but they are the dirty water fly ones are pretty pretty cool <laughs> they got a lot of colors so that's that one i had to share it with you We've got a ton of questions and we're going to, we're just going to pick 
the ones we think are the you know easy to answer and and uh the most helpful for everyone else out there watching again thanks everyone for tuning in this is a lot of, we're having fun i mean we're we're kicking it with uh, yeah, our time too this is we've got two flies done i think in record time here uh <laughs> i had organized it was just tommy and i last week uh brian couldn't make it but we tied one fly and it took over two hours <laughs> but there was a lot of super glue and they're for pike so uh <laughs> Let me pick one or two out here. We've got, uh, let's see. Oh, this is a great question from uh, Poto Bed. Uh, asks how you would manipulate. Man. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, tell us how you would manipulate the brush density at the head to change the action of the fly. I know Ooh, it's something you one. and Alex both talk about. Dan, I know who you are. Yep. Oh, there we go. I don't have the thing sitting in front of me. Yeah, man, that's for sure. Uh, a lot of times you will pack brush on or, or unpack it. Um, you got to have both. Uh, you know, I'm a, I am like burning those flies. I like two-handed burning them. Thumb's not working the way it used to, so I'm kind of not doing that as much or limited basis, I'll say. Um, but yeah, on, on that type of aspect, I'm going to mitigate that brush. I'm going to make it thinner. If I wanted that stop and go, you know, pack that brush on decrease the weight pack the brush on you're going to get more walk the dog so definitely the density of the brush is is key it's actually paramount in most of my flies if you want that if you want a certain action you're going to have to incorporate more brush you're going to have to add two or three more wraps if you want it to do more this then you're going to have to pack the brush on and decrease your weight more of a swim fly you're going to rely more on the hooks the beads and maybe a rattle or something for your weight versus lag sure I think, you know, mindful addition of materials is something a lot of people miss when they're getting going, tying flies, and they just pack stuff in. And what's deceiving sometimes, Russ's flies do look very full at times, but it's a mindful addition of materials. Absolutely, where it's, you know, we just talked about more versus less brush at the head instead of just, well, I got this much hook left i'll just fill it with brush you guys are tying it's a weapon planning out it out yeah you're tying a weapon you're tying a specific thing you're tying based on river conditions the day before you're looking to make the fly that you had that day before better and you that know? trailer hook you know you put less on it it's going to get you more movement are you Absolutely. doing anything on the single hooks Russ, I know, like, weight in the back of the hooks or anything like that. Well, for for the jig-type fly, no. But, yes, Sadati's keel is keel. killer, man. Yeah. Everybody should watch that SVS thing and listen to him. He's he's killer. He's opened the eyes of a lot of people in terms of weight balancing and things like that, even myself. Um, yeah, so, you know, adding weight, you know, to a jig fly, I don't really – do that but if it were let's say i was going to do the same fly with the swing string or, or four sets of, of chain eyes for those that you know don't know uh, a lot of you know it would be this type of setup you're going to get a little bit less more swim more swim with your fly with the swing string or or a double eye um as for the the single hooks if i'm going to try to incorporate to to make the fly add more action what i would simply do is add uh, my tail on the shank. I would add my tail on the shank, and that way my jig fly would have an additional action to it. Mm -hmm. So I could do this with a, a shank, you know. And you can do this fly with a shank. You can put a shank in the middle, but make sure you put a shank on the back. Because if you don't have something coming off that back, the thing's going to wrap up if you make any kind of error in casting. Middle shanks don't work well without some kind of something that back counteracting here. force, basically. Cor correct. Yeah. Okay. So you'll wind up in a crystal ball if you put something in the middle just to make a bigger fly bigger. It usually doesn't work out well. Usually you got to do something off the rear first. But on the jig fly, the only way to get extra action, I think, would be to either add something off the side or add a, a, a kicker, a flicker tail is what I call them, mm -hmm. where you do a single fly with a their tail tied or the rear portion of the fly tied on the shank be the easiest way to get all right what else do we got here brian see any good ones okay there was another really good one this is by rob hayes i guess i see you wrap some materials underneath oh, and not over the top of the rotation 
I noticed some YouTube tires do the same. Is there a reason or just the way you've always done it? Hundred hundred percent reason for it. And the way I do it, I'm I'm a fisherman, I'm an angler, I'm a this is means of production, this is tying a weapon. So when I grab some wanky piece of material like this and it's all scraggly and funky, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie with the curvature. I'm actually gonna look into this thing and I'm gonna see that this piece is aberrant and you see me cut stuff off of it before. I didn't like that piece because it wasn't in line. You see how that's all in line? So whichever direction that material tells me to spin, that's the way I'm doing it. I'm not tying it to, to complete the same way every time. Sometimes I'll go this way. Sometimes I'll go forward. And you've talked about that in years past with feathers as well. Correct. Yeah. Feathers, materials, synthetics, all of them will all give you a natural progression or curve. Don't fight it. <laughs> Do not fight it. Exactly. So if you have to go this way or you have to go that way, that's irrelevant. It's just a means of production. And, and a lot of people that are super stickler about it. I know a guy I used to work with for years and years and years would just get on me about going, oh, you're counter wrapping. You're, oh, you don't even do the same thing twice. Eh, it's whatever the material tells you, just latch it on there. It's just a means of production. There's no right or wrong to it. There's no rule to it. There's whatever is the easiest and most efficient for the fly tire, do it. I, do th it. I think a lot of folks teaching fly tying don't talk about that just because they're still trying to build up folks skills where you know palmering materials right. consistently so a lot of people don't think about it until way later on and then think well yeah if i can if tie stuff down i can do whatever I want. if you really think about it, it your flies look so much better if you listen to the materials yeah, right well, and, and that's that really comes from it getting good products is another thing you know that does help. you get good stuff you're not going to fight the material you're not going to like waste half a bag you're not going to set you're not going to like put something marginal on your thing so you can come out with somewhat of a reasonable product each time you know when i st it sucks when you open a pack of marabou and there's like two usable feathers on there or you're like well i guess i gotta tie nymphs now or i gotta do something with this you know, me, I just throw the thing away and get another <laughs> one. But, it. you know, it, it's it's tricky, and it's been a, a huge asset to have a lot better materials, especially, you know, during the whole COVID thing, man. I'm thankful for MFC. Yeah. <laughs> thankful for for my Brooke letting me tie flies all day and her making her house a mess. <laughs> so it's, it, <laughs> you know, it's, it's been a really big asset to have these companies come through, especially this time, you know, in this, and all you guys and all these fly shops. I'll get onto that right now. Thank you guys out there for supporting local and all these dudes out here. It means yeah. something to them. Absolutely. And these guys are my family. So yeah. if you want to, I mean, this is, we provide these every week for free for a reason because we want to provide something, you know, take your mind off the stress of the world right now and just Dude, talk so fishing out there with right our now. friends. And if you do want to support us, buy materials. It's simple. We have yeah. them all online. It's easy. There's a material list in the link down below. I'll put that in there. I realize this is a different video now. But, you know, if, if you can't buy them from us, buy them from a local shop. Shop local. Shop local, fish local. So we're going to take a quick break. Russ is going to get a drink of water. We're going to tell some inside jokes and funny, embarrassing stories probably real quick and come back and <laughs> tie one more fly. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, we'll be right back. Give us, like, two, three minutes.
pictures Russ yeah. and it reminded me of that time that you caught that seven pound smallmouth with my dad <laughs> you remember that like like on the bogey grip seven pounds I know. that was like right at the MOB yeah, that was like right at, at the kid I don't know no that was at uh was it East we, Bay yeah we went to he picked me up at the Troutsman that's right in the boat in the flats boat right and I'm like I don't know if you should punch it out here. Remember, you got the prop. You got the prop. Yeah. <laughs> don't light this place up in four feet of water. Oh. Well. But yeah, that was that was that day, I, I believe, or the next day, one of the two. I don't know. It was. It was one of the days. It was very close to this proximity. I remember, and I do. I remember it was my first cast. <laughs> like holy crap, dude! That was a huge smallie. <laughs> It's still the biggest one I think I've ever actually weighed, right? I mean, I don't, you know, I don't. Dude, know, that I, thing was so so dark. It was awesome. I barely ever fished in smallmouth, but that was an awesome fish. I still have the picture of that thing. And he, and I have a rod that he put. He put seven. Oh, that's on. right. My dad made you that rod. Yeah, it's awesome. I still have the rod too. Caught a king on last fish I caught on that thing was a salmon. He'll be so excited. I'll tell him. <laughs> he made rods for a lot of my friends. And yeah. Still fish him. I mean, I still fish some of his rods he's made for me, so. Well, Russ is, uh, while Russ is prepping for the next fly, I will mention that next week we have another wonderful tire. We're having uh, Captain Ed McCoy here. Fantastic. And he's Can't gonna wait be, to see it. He's going to be really kind of well. sharing that uh, game changer platform with people and talking about some tips for, for tying flies with shanks you know kind of like russ was talking about balancing some things out getting them to really swim in the water i'm excited to see this because he's adapting a lot of what he does for musky which brian and i have both been lucky enough to fish with him for musky down to trout stuff and right he does a ton of blending and he i'm excited for that i think we're gonna have some a ton of great questions uh a lot of people have been really enjoying blaine's new book game changer it's right. got we lot. do have those game changer kits now too. yes yeah Online. we have a new kit that just came in from the flyman company so you can buy um uh, just micro a single changer. kit for a micro changer and a standard finesse changer i believe as well and there's materials to tie six in each kit which is pretty cool with different colors so fun stuff um yeah yeah i, I mean that's uh that's what's been happening i don't know watching rust tie flies reminds me of like going to his apartment and hanging out back in the day and he had this like lampshade with about i don't know 300 different flies on it right and russ would be like oh yeah like kelly would gal would be like hey pitcher go down and steal some of those flies off of russ's lampshade <laughs> <laughs> you know with those ones they go on the lampshade when they were <laughs> right it's just like the dash of the truck. It's like the dash of the truck. Yeah, they go on the lamp. Lamp it still to this day. Brooke even has her own lamp Always the best. Yeah. Brooke has her own lamp. So I can remember taking Logan over there, and he'd be like, you know, a year old or whatever. There'd be like razor blades and scissors and stuff. And, you know, he'd want to, like, pick up all the hooks. And, you know, it was like the least childproof place I've ever been in my entire life. <laughs> but Logan's just like playing with all the flies and we're hanging out. Like, 
<laughs> that was like not a good filer at that point, probably. But we had fun. Yeah, it was. It was great. <laughs> Good, I think healthy, I remember. good old fashioned fun, Brian. Uh, good old fashioned. <sighs> <laughs> I think so, I was fishing with. Uh, who, I think I was fishing with ligament. We had steelhead camp or whatever, and the steelhead was really slow. And Russ had given me a a little ziploc of of flies at one point that were on his dash, which is always a good sign. And if they're I on the think dash, they're when good. When Flynn found out, he rode back upstream. To get some, <laughs> <laughs> we didn't catch anything all day. Well, that's part of steelhead camp. That's right. Well, we should probably not have steelhead camp in January, right? So, Russ, what are you going to tie now? Yeah, well, I'm going to do another little variation. It's kind of a peanutty looking thing. I'm going to run another lively leg brush on it, and I'm going to do a chain, a chain one this time, just so I keep it up a little bit. Fantastic. We'll do it. It'll be a tandem one. More again. of a hoverfly, maybe. Yeah, it'll be just like you know, just a, a modified waiting system. This will be a you know smoltish looking one. Cool. So Keep the questions here. coming. We'll have more time for that, and there's some we still need to still need to answer as well. So we're gonna hop over to to the vice cam and let Russ do what he does. Latch stuff on a hook. Where's his magic? Make weapons. Oh, weapons production. Non arts and crafts. Again, starting off the same thing. We're gonna we're gonna run the same exact framework on these flies, guys. And the diversity of what you can do with this type of pattern with basic materials can catch you fish all year. Really can. zebra and running some voodoo I like mixing the voodoo with the bard When do you, when do you run black and white type stuff? I like it on the spring, mostly. But the contrast is always a good color. Contrast is good. Contrast is a very very good program to run. I think white's probably one of the more mis misunderstood and mis uh, or underappreciated streamer color and there's a time where it's just it's there, the hottest thing on the planet and that's all they want and absolutely that's a good point that is knowing a, when to get them very very good point and yeah usually it's going to be in that double nickel right it's sometime when that water is on that flying up when that thing goes from like steelhead spawning to the next level better better have that white yeah better have white it's in it, it usually it's it's that small situation that kicks it off but that's just on the rivers with those migratory fish so if you're on that upper river it's a totally different biomass you're going to have daces hatching you're going to have sculpin spawning in that same time frame so your bites and that's another thing that people really really don't pay enough attention to especially streamer guys bother the heck out of me but know your biomass I mean, heck, you don't. The trout guy isn't going to go out there with some blueing olive during a hex hatch, right? Why the heck are you going to run something that's not a smolt during when every salmon smolt in the river is hatching? You know, so pay attention to the river you're fishing. Do your homework. Do your homework. Know the biomass. Know that lampreys are spawning. Know that sculpins are spawning. Know that this river has more crayfish than other river. You know. All of that makes a difference, and it's a it's a huge thing that streamer guys just don't pay attention to. And this is just force a habit, guys. It's just me tying a fly here, and most of the time when I'm doing this, I'm putting 
multiple products on my hook and it just it it's a small thing and it doesn't take much effort but the dividends when your fly is done it just makes such a dramatic difference here i'll throw some silver reactor in there let's fire it up a bit you know matt when i'm running these uh silver or white and silver the the natural type stuff i'm always gonna put like a contrast up front somewhere usually could be black red you know something like that we'll make this fly a little bit lighter because i do want it to swim a little bit again this comes that was straight down to meat and potatoes what am i fishing this fly for when am i fishing it and how am i going to attain a trout on it and high riding fly is going to be spraying for me or it's late fall you know before that temperature drops down i'm just going to throw a little grizzly on there for color keep up with the pattern Another thing, don't use your scissors when you don't have to break stuff. Loop it off, I'm keeping that end nice and light. some uh, monofilament get a little kink on there so it'll spin throw a little pink bead in this one that'll look pretty cool lights are not on Beat on there. Another A Rex six oh five, one size bigger. So you go one and then a two out two one. This will be the one up here. Attach some thread up there. Well, since I've already made the determination that this is gonna be a swimming fly i'm gonna run my swing string up here hey Russ, real quick we did have a question uh what kind of necks are you getting the grizzly soft tackle feathers from there Ooh, that you just one. pulled That's off actually i think these are root river actually just a saddle it's just yeah just patches yep but i think i got these these exact ones from root Another good one that looks just like that is a, a hairline grizzly. Yeah, yeah, I've used them too. Uh, Ted's asking about the uh, the genesis of the bead in the middle between two hooks. Which oh, here it's a great question. Yeah, back in the back in the early eighties, we'll start off like Kelly. Just kidding, <laughs> Kelly. It was probably more back in the no, no, it's still early eighties. It's always early. 80s. Early eighties. Back in the early eighties. No. Back in the early 80s, we had these hooks that were like Carrie Stevens looking things that were big, gigantic, long shank things and, and like four extra long and like the gap, like Four's a third. Long. Yeah, like super, you know, short gap with a weird bend. So the long shank hooks this is how the, the entire two fly thing in my mind came about. We had to join the two hooks together with the mono because they were the, the long shank hook we would spin off all our fish. So at the time, we just had two longer shank hooks. We didn't need the bead. Now we have these short shank hooks with a big gap. We need to space our, our hooks out in order to be effective on our rear hook. 
that's the progression of the the bead actually coming into the universe of spacing was because of the hook development and they got shorter with a wider gap and to add two flies we needed space remember when we used to take our pike leaders and we take the wire and join the hooks that way yeah yeah ski and tags we, well girl used to use ski tags yeah we used to just like any way to get anything that to get that back. together <laughs> tie you know the string leeches all that stuff came about that way this was before shanks i mean yeah we right. tied flies before shanks remember that like yeah we tied <laughs> flies before shanks tied flies before these cool bobbins and these vices yeah it was amazing we tied flies before the internet <laughs> no way i know it's shocking we fished before the internet too and some of us thought we weren't cool. You, we were the bad kids. You school. didn't catch fish though before the internet. Yeah, right? that's not. <laughs> remember no when? It, remember when you were the only kid at school to fish? Right. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I can remember Russ floating down a piece of ice one day. <laughs> what? <laughs> An ice jam. I'm sitting there. We're fishing with Sean. We didn't even know Russ was like fishing. And here comes this dude sitting on like an ice floe, and it was Russ. And he's he's, he's, he's Playing a steelhead, literally floating down the PM on this like piece of ice. No, they go no there. Again, we're latching it on, we're folding it over, we're doing our thing, we're pulling the Queen Mary with, with this, the swing nothing, string. With swing the swing string. string, that's what I'm calling it. I don't know what anybody else calls it. It's trademark it. now. It, 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 it should be because that. like I talked to to Senyo and a lot of the dudes and Feenstras and the Johnny Rays and all these swing dudes, and they're like, "This isn't it." And you know what? When you take that, some of the flies that have this swing string has been a great addition to the hook setup for additional weight. It's almost been one of the more exclusive weighting systems that I've used on my flies because it's so efficient. Um, you know, think about like the upper Manistee or upper Osable or Pure Marquette at times and places where you, you don't have the real estate to chuck lead you know you sometimes the fish is behind that little sandbar not in front of it so when you're going from four feet of water to three inches of water to two feet of water again the chain can actually get you there into that back pit without having to go into the mud you can actually fish it for the two seconds that you need that thing to fish there that's why I, honestly straight up when i saw those dudes with those swing flies with that I go, what a perfect waiting system for that, for for many, many rivers. And it's underutilized. Throw some reactor in there again. Where the heck did my pull the flash? It kind of went away. Oh, here it is. Again, you see how aberrant that is? I'm gonna go right up into here and I'm gonna hack that apart. So it's bothersome. So now I got a nice clean transition there. If anything, manipulating these wraps and these materials that go round and round, doesn't matter what they are, but look for a decent chunk. It's really gonna save you some process in the long run. Another thing is maintain your material by pulling it back. Force. You know, a lot of this fly tying business is material manipulation and what you can get away with. You know, how hard can you pull your thread before the pull of pain happens? How hard can you push the material? Same exact process, done with a different weighting system, completely different color. Play around with these materials. You know, none of this is set in stone. This is all just a pattern for you guys to go out and catch a bunch of fish on. It's just framework. Throw that reactor on there.
matched up. There we go. Now on this one, we're going to add a little bit of bulk because I want a, it, more of a chromatic. I'm going to take a three inch chromatic brush on most of these peanut style flies because I actually like the bulk of the back that this brush provides. Now back to what Dan was saying, how much you put on there. Well, this can actually aid in your swim. So you might want to pack a few wraps right in tight. I'm going to do like two or three of them. And the benefit of doing just a few wraps of these brushes is these suckers aren't cheap. So when you're packing those in there a little bit, you can actually do like quite a few flies with these pieces. So I'd recommend just even if you have like a little Ziploc or whatever, throwing every little scrap of these brushes in there because you can go back and do something like this. You can add accents to your flies. And what that's going to do is it's going to simply add a lot more bulk to the back end of your fly. It's going to push whatever material you put in front of it out more. And you'll see what I'm talking about when I get it done. I'm taking my trusty whip finisher, I'm going to pull some of this material out. Get it so it's plucked out. You can use a 22 cleaning brush or whatever. One of the commercial pullers. So you kind of see what you what you're getting here. Nice transition there. I'm gonna throw a little color into this fly. Get this under these horns. Got it with one left. Uh, you could use red, you could use blue, you can use pink, you can use whatever. I just happen to have this color at my disposal. So I'm going to throw the contrast with a little bit of orange in there. And you don't need much to create a really cool effect. And your bead will shine through too. Yeah, right? I mean, I wish I had pink, but I don't. But at any rate, I'll get over it. But yeah, you throw a little contrast in there. Probably shorten that up a bit. And again, I'll go... If I can find one up here. We'll take that one and a half inch lively leg. This has got like a pink accent to it. Man, there's a million of these too, and they're super cool. You can use the two inchers as well for any one of the flies that you saw today. No rules. Just figure eighting it through, and you get the old COVID head. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure, like I said, you're wrapping that wire. Make sure there's no sharp edges on there. It's my disclaimer. Make sure you clean up your own mess. Because <laughs> sometimes you can get a edge of that you can snap your floral right off. Man, that looks great, Ross. There like, you go. You got a, uh, do you have a name for that? Or? Mm -mm. <laughs> I love it. Uh, no, no. It's a brush I, hog. I knew the I knew the name or the, I knew the answer to that before I asked it because the guys that crank out flies constantly. You don't, they don't name them. Name them? No. I mean, uh, that Kevin looks like, laughed about I'll it. I'll call last this one oak. This... <laughs> we'll call well, this one oak tree. I believe that this is where that one will be. You could probably <laughs> find it on the upper mana somewhere. You know, maybe we'll call this one cedar. Cedar. Yeah, yeah it looks like it'd be yeah. a cedar to me. What about yeah, the... this one we'll call rock. What about the Zulu? 
<laughs> yeah, zoo. The zoo, that's a great Ooh. ice cream. Great uh, ice cream. And I actually saw a fly with that exact design recently. Did you really? It's a bonefish fly, and I was like, wow, what a great idea. All the parallel Too bad thinking. all I did was fish perch with that thing. All the parallel thinking that goes on when your time flies, right? Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, a lot right. of people have the same great idea. Yeah. Oh, we did have a question about uh, bead chain and placement on top or below of your hook. Does it matter to you? Well, if you're tying something with your, you know, the, the reason to tie anything on the top or bottom of a hook is to, to control the ride. Now, that goes away when you have big sinking lines sometimes. Your fly will can come in on its side sometimes. Sometimes it can come upside down. Sometimes it can just maintain its course. I find that if you want a jig style fly, I put my flat my eyes on the top. If I want a swim type fly, I put them on the bottom, and that's pretty much across the board for me. Yeah, you know, whether it's lead or chains. If I'm making a fly dart, swim, move aggressively, I'm putting it on the on the bottom of the hook. If I'm making a fly, if I'm counting on the fall to generate a bite, I'm putting it on the bottom or the top rather. Sorry. On the top. Sure. Yep. Uh, let's see. We got, we got a few other questions out there. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm going to modify this question from Rob uh, because I, I kind of answered it in the chat. He was asking about learning the uh, the forage base for your rivers, which we did mention Kevin's new book is really yeah, good. That's yeah, that's a good one. Really good. Uh, how did you learn, Russ, and how long <laughs> did it take you? How about that? There's one. How about fishing a lot? <laughs> and running the wrong crap a lot for a lot of the year. Um, it, it was a huge advantage to be around guys like Kelly because he doing his taxidermy stuff Seems and all in all the things that you're like, oh my gosh, they actually eat that. Right. No way. Why are there all these fish and that? Why are there all these frogs and those brown trout in the middle of December? How is that even possible? But you learn stuff. And... It, you know, going through that biomass just like a dry fly guy would. Look at your Michigan rivers. Look at your sculpin spawning. You know it's going to be in the spring at some point. Your daces are going to be hatching. You're going to have uh, all your river minnows have a temperature range of which they're going to be more prominent than any other species per that river. Um, lamprey spawning. Another huge underutilized resource. Everything eats them only bait i think banned in the pro walleye tour i believe you can't run live lampreys anymore but it, it, you know that that is really critical because there's two week time frames where that's all that that's that's what's going down sure right that's what's going down so if you're on the pier marquette and you're you know you're in the middle of a smolt situation and you got some sculpin on there it doesn't mean the fish isn't going to eat it it means your odds are greatly improved at downsizing your fly and running something you know that they are eating that they are eating um that's another thing with all the giant flies people are running nowadays small's in guys small's in i'm just gonna tell you that right now small is in yeah, this big stuff going through with these fish you know let's say there's a hundred of them per mile you know how many double deceivers in yellow are they gonna take you got right. 10 boats in front of you you know, so that's another, it comes down to right here, it comes down to this first thread wrap. You know, when I'm fishing, it, I got to have as much confidence in that first thread wrap because that's what's going on in my line. It's just as important as a knot or a cast or a rower. How about that one? A rower. Right. You know, and a lot to be said for that aspect of the sport. You know, how you control your vessel is pretty key in most all fishing. So that's you know some fundamental verse, but fly can make make or break you most of the time. Absolutely. Anything else? Anybody uh, want to add anything? Last chance, everybody, get your questions in. Uh, Brian, do you have any? I don't, man. It's just been a joy. It's always fun hanging out with Russ. It's oh, been it's too fun. long, and you know, during this whole COVID year, we just yeah. can't get together like we normally would, or you know, hang out. So, anyway. Great to see you. Right on. Thanks, thanks for, for doing me this, out, man. You know. Hey, all y'all out there on Facebook land, get a hold of your local river, get a hold of your river cleanup people, donate the money, get on a mailing list, do something. Yep. Resources 
you know, count on you to help them out. It's another so. another reason why local shops are really important is they spend time and money and energy on the local resources, unlike some of the, the bigger places. Hey, you buy something from yeah. Sierra Trading Post, what have they done for your local TU chapter? Right. Have they gone down to the bourbon and carried a rock? Right. No. So exactly. that's why you shop local. That's right. Shop small. Yeah, we appreciate it, man. Uh, it's no problem. Super fun. Um, yeah, this was great. Can't wait to see the finished product. It'll be, you know, eventually up. Thanks for dealing with all the technical issues oh, in no the beginning, deal. everyone. And we speak, apologize for yeah. that. And what Brian was alluding to there, this video, like all of our live tying videos for the year and maybe even next year, are going to be available for replay anytime you want, free of charge. This will be available tomorrow sometime usually it's about 24 hours youtube has to process these if you're new to our channel maybe think about hitting that subscribe button it lets you know when we have new videos out uh and our channel is really focused on midwest and great lakes anglers we do tons of tying uh steelhead trout pike bass you name it michigan and the great flies. lakes are so diverse and we try and cover it all so uh also maybe hit that thumbs up button that helps us out helps other people find these videos as well tune in next week for ed mccoy and game changers i will put the material list for russ's creations down in, in the link below and uh i saw you were taking notes over there man oh yeah you know it's diligently like, right so good job <laughs> <laughs> thanks everyone for your patience tonight tuning in huge thanks to russ madden everyone uh Russ, if they want to uh, get in touch with you, what's the best way to get in touch with you over flies or anything? Do you want them to get in touch? <laughs> or you well, can just route through Well, if they can take it, I'll take you. Russell, Russell will uh, – he's very upfront with people, and that's okay. That's good. I, no coddling. <laughs> no coddling. No safe No bacon. coddling. Uh, no. What was the uh, – <laughs> Oh, uh, ha official hashtag for tonight, by the way, is this is not arts and crafts. So <laughs> That's good. this is not arts and crafts, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. This is production fly this is time. Production. This not is arts and crafts. Weapons. That's right. <laughs> this isn't for. <laughs> this isn't to decorate your box. This is to go out. These are weapons. Hey, I thought we were doing lampshades. No, this is no. this is oak. <laughs> That's oak. Remember. oak cedar and yeah. rock. Yeah, yeah. But all right, we'll see you next week, everybody. Thanks a lot. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.